Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 Description I wear cap. <laughs> 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 Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. This is the city. Every 24 hours, a little bit of everything happens. Two million people make a lot of history in one day. They write it all down and file it away. Some of it's important, some of it isn't. Business, industry, government, you buy a three cent stamp or an oil well. They keep records on all of it. Progress, money, success, and failure. A complete history of every day. Some of it's public, some of it's personal. It's all written down. In my job, we catalog trouble. I'm a cop. It was Wednesday, October 6th. It was sultry in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of homicide. My partner's Ed Jacobs. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. It was 10.45 a.m. when we got to the Ortega Hotel. A 30-year-old man had disappeared suddenly. We'd uncovered evidence of foul play. The list of suspects was narrowed down to one man, the last person to see the victim alive. We traced the suspect for months. The break finally came. We found him. Taking his time, isn't it? Yeah, you want to try it again? Yeah, all right. Yeah? Police officers, your name Henry Ross? Watch it out. And behind your back. Both of them. Sound that chair. What is this? You guys really cops? No fooling are you cops. I thought you were faking. I showed you my card at the door. I thought you were faking, that's the truth. There's a couple of guys out to muss me up, and I thought you were them. Your name Henry Ross? Sure, that's right. No, I thought you were one of those moochers I had a fight with in the bar the other night. He said he was going to get a pal and come back and take care of me. Yeah? Well, sure, I got no reason to fight cops. Didn't do my room any good. The landlady's going to scream. All right, you want to finish up dressing? I want to talk to you downtown. What's it about, officer? Missing person. We'll brief you when we get downtown. All right with me. Would you take these cuffs off, please? Kind of hard to dress with them. All right. Bend over. I don't know why you have to slap cuffs on me. I didn't know you were cops. Mind if we check through your things, Ross? Huh? Why? You mind? Well, go ahead if you want. I got nothing to hide. If you spoke up at the door, there wouldn't have been this fight. I thought you were that mooch in the bar and his friend. I thought you were looking for trouble. All right, mister. You about ready to go? Oh, I'd like to brush my teeth first, if you don't mind. Got a mouthful of cotton this morning. Where do you keep your toothbrush? Well, over here. I'll get it. Never mind. All right. You want me to turn on the water tap? You can make out. Nothing, Joe. Pretty clean. Of course I'm clean. I'm on some toothpaste. What'd you expect? Anybody can make a mistake. I didn't know you were cops. Henry Ellsworth Ross. That's your full name? Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Well, hardly ever used the Ellsworth. <laughs> Lousy name, huh? Well, what's the picture of all this, officer? We told you. Missing person. We'd like to talk to you about it. Well, don't think I can help you. Nobody I know is missing. How about Paul Davis? Davis? Yeah, I knew it, Davis. Don't know if his name was Paul, though. Have been gone a long time, this guy, Davis? Yeah, that's right. Was something wrong, you think? Yeah, we figure murder. At 
After going over his room thoroughly, we took Henry Ellsworth Ross back to the city hall to the interrogation room. He was a longshoreman by trade. Among his friends and acquaintances, he was known as a heavy drinker and a man with a violent temper. Ed and I questioned him for half an hour. We got nowhere. I'll tell you the truth, I just don't know what you're getting at. I think I knew a guy named Davis, and that's about as far as it goes. You sure that's all you have to tell us? Of course I'm sure. Well, look, I got a right to a lawyer if you're gonna stand there and throw a lot of charges at me. We're not throwing charges at you, Henry. We got a missing persons case. I'd like to have you cooperate. That's about it. Well, maybe I'd like to, but I can't. Paul Davis. Just a name to me. <laughs> maybe I know him. I don't know. You got that report there, Ed? Yeah. That's it. Thank you. According to his wife, Paul Davis left Los Angeles by auto a little over four months ago. He was driving up to Oakdale, California to take a job with the dairy company. He never got there. He's been missing ever since. And what's the pitch? Well, all we've been able to find is Davis's car. 36 Ford Coupe, 7 Tom 7972. Was sold a month ago up in Lodi, California, but Davis didn't sell it. A man by the name of Carter signed the pink slip at the time of sale. Henry Carter. Sorry, it doesn't mean anything to me. Well, this Carter made it look like Paul Davis had signed the Ford over to him. We checked it out. Davis' signature was forged. And that's all. It's supposed to have something to do with me? Did you ever use the name Henry Carter? Of course not. Ross, that's the only name I go by. You never had your name changed? No. You never used an alias? I told you no. I wonder if you'd mind taking a look at this here. Well, what's it got to do with me? That's the pink slip to Paul Davis' car, Henry. Now, these signatures on the back, transfer of ownership, you recognize either one of them? Paul Davis and Henry H. Carter. Well, just names to me. Well, am I supposed to recognize something? Should, yeah. Why? The signatures, they're both in your handwriting. How about it, Henry? How about what? I don't know what you're talking about. You're trying to give me the treatment? What's it all about? We're trying to locate Paul Davis. I'm not even sure I know the guy. Now, look, I think you better level, Henry. Our handwriting man checked both the signatures. It's your writing. Well, maybe better go into a handwriting man. I never saw that slip. I never wrote those signatures. Anybody can copy handwriting. I got something else for you here. I'd like to have you check it over, Ross, see if you can identify it. Well, what is it? It's a letter. Take a look at it. Mean anything to you? <laughs> no, nothing. Hope you're not going to tell me that's my handwriting. That's what the report says. Uh, that's crazy. I never wrote like that in my life. All the writing characteristics match up, same as the signatures on the pink slip. All right, maybe they are the same. I didn't write one, though. I never wrote like that in my life. Okay, I'll show you. No, that's all right, Henry. Ed, you want to pull the package from R&I? Yeah, okay. I don't sabby one bit of this, Sergeant. To how about laying it out for me, huh? You can see the name there at the bottom of the letter. Now it's signed Henry Carter, same as the pink slip. That doesn't mean anything to me. That letter was sent to the wife of Paul Davis about nine weeks ago. That says there that Davis supposedly was too busy to write his wife. So he had this Henry Carter send a letter. He also writes that Davis sold his car to Carter. Somebody trying to cover up, huh? Yeah, we think so. We think it's Henry Carter. This guy Davis been gone four months? That's right. You said you thought Davis was murdered. How come? Just an idea. Eight men have disappeared from around here in the last 14 months, just like Davis. Six more up in the San Joaquin Valley, same way. They took off alone on auto trips. Never seen again, not a trace of them. There you go, Joe. Yeah, thanks. We've got your record here, Henry, from Baton Rouge. We sent to Sheriff Clemens for it. Well, after we have to drag all that out again, it's past. There's just one thing we had to check out, Henry. Now, you told us that you never used an alias, is that right? Well, all right, I have. Well, I didn't know what you were getting at. I didn't figure it was any use in dragging out dirty laundry again. I asked you if you ever used the name Henry Carter. Yeah, okay, so I used him. It. It's a common name. A lot of Henry Carters are out. We only know one who fits your description. Well, I'm clean, you know that. Smoke, Henry? No. Joe? Thanks. Yeah, let me have one, huh? Sure. Henry, we 
rode this thing for four months all over the state, and I'll tell you what we got. We'll let you make up your own mind. It's not my writing. On June 4th, Paul Davis left Los Angeles in his car, headed up for Oakdale. Late in the afternoon, he stopped for gas at a service station just beyond San Fernando. The attendant says a man was with Davis. You fit that man's description, Henry. Yeah? I've seen monks like that in court. They get on the stand, I can't even remember their name. A couple others. You and Davis stopped for a hamburger just outside of Gorman. There's a man there. He remembers you, too. You stopped again in Bakersfield, picked up a quart of oil for the car. You and Davis had a Coke. That's the last time he was seen alive. That makes me a killer, huh? A month after that, the pink slip to Davis's car came through DMV up in Sacramento. That was for the transfer of ownership from Davis to Henry Carter, both in your handwriting. A couple of weeks later, Mrs. Davis got that letter. A month ago, Davis's car was sold to a dealer up in Lodi. Huh? We found the dealer. Ross showed him your mug shot. He says you sold him the car. That all? No, that's just the main part. There's more. We've been on the road a lot. We followed you from here to Sacramento and back, Henry. Every stop, every detour. Took us a long time. Yeah, I guess it did. What do you say, Ross? Nothing. All right. Any way you want it, Henry. Yeah, I guess you worked hard on it, huh? All over the state. That's right. Must be pretty hot up in the valley. Summertime. Dusty, huh? We made out. No, I've never been up in the valley in summer. Too hot for me. We got people who saw you up there. Yeah, what's it prove? Ten people some handwriting samples. You can't build a case on that. You know that, don't you? We're gonna try. You think I murdered Davis? You, Sergeant? Yeah. You think I murdered those other guys, too, huh? Oh, what was it, ten or twelve of them? We're asking about Davis. You think I killed him? Well, tell me the truth, do you? You think I murdered Davis? Yeah, I think you did, Henry. Uh-huh. And you know as well as I do, there's only one way to prove it. Yeah. Find his body. <laughs> 1.15 p.m. Ed and I took Henry Ross out and fed him some lunch. Then we took him back to the city hall to the interrogation room where we continued to question him. He was relaxed and he talked a great deal about everything but the disappearance of Paul Davis. He didn't seem anxious to get away. He made no demands for an attorney to represent him. He told us about different homicide cases that he'd read up on. He asked us about the 12 men who disappeared in the past months in the same manner Paul Davis had. Was there any trace of them at all? Did we have any leads? We finally got around to asking him if he'd submit to a lie detector test. He seemed taken by the idea and agreed to it almost immediately. We made up a list of key questions. Ed called Sergeant Berger and made arrangements for the test. At 5 p.m., we took the suspect to the third floor of the old city jail where Sergeant Berger gave him the polygraph test. When it was over, we brought him back to the interrogation room. The questioning continued. Ross kept talking. We let him talk. 8 p.m., he was still going strong. You remember the Wilson case back in 34, don't you, Sergeant? Woman killed her whole family. Big case. You remember it? Yeah. Pretty tragic. Not a hobby of yours, Henry? Collecting murder stories? No, I just read them. I remember them. Guess I can remember every murder case in the past 15 years. That's so. Well, sure, just about all of them. I guess it's kind of a hobby. I get a big kick out of it. Joe, Seaman. Yeah. Burger opened the polygraph room just called. What'd he say? They found 16 positive reactions on us. Thanks, Bates. Right. You know, there's one thing I get a real kick out of. These detective magazines, mystery stories, you know, the way they make out the murderer. How do you mean? Well, you know, they always build it into something big. Somebody's always killing somebody else for a million dollars or, or maybe over some woman. Some beautiful woman. Same with the movies. That's where they get it all mixed up. I don't think I follow you, Henry. Sure you do. Every time some guy writes a murder story, he's got to build up a big reason for the killing. Well, it generally works out that way, doesn't it? Why? I'll bet there's a thousand murder cases in your files without a reason. Some people kill, that's all. I've heard about lots of them. Sure, they just want to kill and they go ahead and do it. Maybe for a few bucks, maybe for nothing. They just do it, that's all. That's all. Well, sure. You know that. Like this thing you've been talking about. 
10, 12 guys disappear. They got a few bucks, maybe they got nothing. Somebody plows them under, that's all. No big reason, they just do it. So 12 guys are gone. Doesn't mean anything. Is that how you figured it, Henry? Huh? Phone call a minute ago. That was from the man who gave you the lie detector test. Oh, that right? How'd it go? Well, he just finished going over your graph. He got 16 positive reactions. Yeah? What would that mean? You lied, Henry. 16 times. Is that right? Yeah, but I told him to get a new machine. I lied all the way through. You mind telling us why? No, I don't mind. I guess I knew you'd find out. Well, let's go out and get something to eat for us, huh? Hungry. We better talk a little more, Henry. Now, let's go. I'll tell you while we're eating. Bring a pencil and I'll draw you a map. A map of what? The canyon, where I buried him. Ed and I took Henry Ross out to get him something to eat. At his request, we went to Helga's health shop. It was almost closing time. Ross got himself a salad, molasses bread, yogurt, a vegetable burger, and some grape juice. Ed and I settled for a Swiss cheese sandwich and some grape juice. Vegetable burger and beets, huh? Sure smells great. Yeah, I can't take those beets too well. They repeat on me. Not me. I can eat anything. Salt and pepper? Yeah, thanks. You know, I haven't eaten much today. Hey, did you get your sandwich made with molasses bread? No, wheat germ bread. Oh, you should have got molasses bread. Real black strap molasses. Hmm. Smell it. Nice and fresh, huh? Oh, you know this yogurt? Really sharpens up my appetite. Food tastes great, huh? Want some saccharin, Joe? Yeah, thanks. We brought a pencil along, Ross. Want us to start making notes? Good time as any, I guess. You know, the whole thing comes right back to what I was trying to tell you there in the office. Well, what's that? Well, you know about the phony mystery stories. And every time there's trouble, there's a big reason behind it. Phony, that's all. Yeah? Sure. This Paul Davis, for instance. Well, I guess I knew you'd find out. I knew this morning when you picked me up, I knew you had to figure. Must have been a big job, huh? Finding me. Pretty big, Henry, yeah. A lot of mileage. How'd it happen? Well, there again, it's just what I was saying. There's no reason behind it. I needed a few bucks, and this Davis came along. I guess he was up. So you want to pass me a song? Mm -hmm. There you are. Where'd you meet Davis, Henry? Well, I was hitchhiking out in Ventura. Not a dime in my jeans. I was going up to Maricopa. Thought I had a job up there. Well, this Davis came along and picked me up. You ever know him before that? No, stranger. Said he was going to Oakdale and be glad to give me a ride. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, I think we stopped for gas up around San Fernando, and I saw that he had a few bucks in his wallet. I guess that's when I got the idea. About what? I'm chilling him. Maybe that gives you an idea what I was talking about. You don't need any big reason to kill somebody. Davis had 18 bucks. Suppose I told that to a writer, somebody killing the guy for 18 bucks. Wouldn't make much sense, huh? He'd tell you to never sell. You need a million dollars. Beautiful woman. Good motive. Where'd you kill him, Henry? Outside of Bakersfield, little canyon there. Then picked up a fifth of sherry in Bakersfield, and I got Davis to drink some on the way. Say, would you pass the salt again? Yeah. Here you are. Uh, lettuce is no good without a lot of salt. How'd you kill Davis, Henry? Funny thing. He drank some of the wine and got a little sleepy. That was just outside of Bakersfield, and it was dark by that time. Spotted this little canyon, and I figured it was as good a place as any. Yeah? Well, I got him to pull off the road, and we had a few more drinks, and I spotted this little shack out there, out in the middle of nowhere. Exactly where was this, Henry? Well, I can show you. Maybe uh, two miles north of Bakersfield. We got to the shack and finished the wine, and then we went to sleep. Both of you? Mm-hmm. That's where the funny part comes in. Well, I guess I killed Davis, all right, but... I I didn't mean it. I won't get a whiff of that, will you? I think those monks would figure out some other time to clean up except when people are eating. They'll be through in a minute. 
How do you mean, Henry, you didn't mean to kill him? You already told us you had the idea. Sure, I had the idea. Well, let me explain it, then. Well, we both went to sleep in this shack, Davis and me. I guess that must have been about 9 o'clock that night. I just don't know what it was. Maybe the wine, I guess, and I started having nightmares. Huh? Yeah. I mean, this part sounds like a story, but it's the truth. I had all these dreams. I woke up, but they were still there. What's that? On the faces. That's all I could see. The air was full of faces. I guess I was really still asleep. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I picked up a two before and started swinging at them. Faces. Funny thing. I knew every one of those faces. How do you mean? People I killed. There's only a dozen of them, really, but it seemed like there were hundreds of them. All around in the air. Grabbed a two before and started swinging. I was cold and I was sweating at the same time. I kept swinging. Then I saw Davis. Swung hard. Kept swinging. He didn't even make a sound. Eyes closed. He kept swinging in his head. When I came to, there he was, lying on the floor. He seemed to take those other faces away. They didn't bother me after I killed Davis. What'd you do with him, Henry? Oh, I pulled him outside the shack, dug a hole and buried him. Burned his clothes, took his car and money and drove off. I'll show you if you like where I buried him, I mean. How about those other men, Ross? These faces you saw. Yeah, I wonder if I can get some more of that juice. Sure looks good. Oh, sure. Take mine. I haven't touched it. What about it, Ross, the other men? Well, I don't recall them too well. It's what you said in the office. Ten or twelve of them. A couple in Sacramento and the others down through the valley. Like I say, no big reason for killing any of them. Just happened that way, that's all. What'd you do with them, you remember? In general, yeah. There's one of them, though, that stands out. A guy by the name of Slattery. Some kind of salesman. A real crybaby. Where'd this happen? Only well, picked me up in his car outside of Chow Chilla. It was nighttime and he was feeling pretty good. I made him stop on the side road and hit him with a piece of angle iron. Cried like a baby. Buried him in the field. And he was one of those faces I saw. Shows you how psychology works, huh? Yeah. What'd you do with his car? Slatteries, I mean. I drove it down to Mexico and sold it there. Guess that's what I should have done with Davis's car, huh? Those killings of yours, Henry. You got any more you want to tell us about? I told you already. Ten or twelve of them. Pretty much the same. When was the first one? Oh, maybe 18 months, two years ago. First one wasn't any harder than the last. Just like I was telling you before. Yeah. You know, everybody builds up murder. It's supposed to be a big thing, hard to do. All those phony stories. I hit a guy a couple times with something. That'd be it. A real small thing. It didn't change me any. And that's why I say it's, it's all built up. You ever been treated for any mental sickness, Ross? No, why? You ever been examined by a psychiatrist? No. After you killed these men, did it bother you at all? Oh, just that one dream. Time was with Davis. That's about it. I'm sure a good meal, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. Yeah, okay. Ready? Let's go. We go back to City Hall now, huh? Yeah. You ready to give us a statement now? All right. I had an idea you'd find me. I guess I always knew you'd find me. Yeah. Well, I guess I proved my point anyway. It's all built up. What is? Well, murder, killing somebody. Those phony stories, it's all built up. It's just cheap. You got it wrong, Henry. Huh? Wait till they read you the bill. Come on, let's go. January 7th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 86, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. The suspect was tried and found guilty of murder in the first degree.